Welcome back. <laughs> Peak Music here, 2017 iCast. Welcome back, guys. We are live from iCast, and uh, and I'm real excited um, right now. A good friend of mine, we fished together a long time, and uh, I'm glad to have him here talking to me about some of his new baits. But right now, we got Freddie Boom Boom Rum Banis. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you so much, Pete. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a treat to have you, man. I'm um, yeah. just walk down memory lane uh, with with me and freddie what, what was it it was mississippi river was that the first time we roomed together or is that the first uh, year we roomed together yeah i mean it was i mean it was the very beginning of my career right and yeah i mean it was 2004 is that like what that. it was something yeah. like that yeah 2004 and you had you wound up winning that tournament 2000 yep uh maybe 2005 but yeah okay lacrosse wisconsin yep. yep and he wound up winning that tournament on uh on a frog which is not uncommon but what for me, which was uncommon. I mean, coming from frog fishing on the East Coast, how I learned it is, man, we're mat. We're, if there's not a mat around, we're not fishing a frog. And uh, you, you didn't fish that way with it at all. No, I actually fished open water in the middle of a pond, like not against yep. the bank or anything like that. There were some scattered lily pads and stuff, but a lot of my fish came over submerged vegetation, right? Walking it real slow, and uh, those fish came up off the bottom and three four foot of water and ate it that's that was amazing. was amazing and you know you would think somebody like me would take that technique and put it right to work but it took it did it didn't work that way for me i like i'm like that was a mistake he got lucky winning that tournament and then we saw rojas doing it and all the you know all that open water frog fish and stuff and you showed me the way in 2004 <laughs> and it took me too long to follow but that that was a great win that was your first big win yeah it really was i mean i was actually i you know i put all my eggs in that basket went the flw side and, mm -hmm. and 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 bass actually did the bass master tour and it just you know I, I had so much to learn i really did i mean i grew up in california i grew up fishing delta i grew up frog fishing i mean that was my strength but at that time in my in my life i mean i had literally spent every single dime I actually had negative money in my account at that event, and uh, I wasn't even sure how I was going to get back to California, um, and then to, you know, find what I'd like to do, and, and I've learned a lot just over the years. You know, I always refer back to the events that I've won in the past and figure mm -hmm. out what, you know, what was it that made those events so special, and it was, I went and found my pattern and figured out how I can make that work on the body water I'm fishing. And, uh, you know, really that's the biggest tip I can give anybody that wants to tournament fish on new body waters. Go out there with your strength and find that bite. Um, and that's what I did. I, I, it was, that's how you win. That's how you win. That's how that you win. Exactly and that's, you win. that's a big difference from being consistent or, you know, be, right. that's how you get into the winner circle. Guys ask us that all the time and, and you get caught up trying to chase the dominant pattern or right. what, what you're reading about, about how guys are winning there now. But that's not it. It's about finding the, the, the strengths, finding your strengths. I mean, you take Brett Height, for instance. I mean, the mm -hmm. guy is, we all know, the best chatterbait, mm -hmm. bladed jig fisherman on the planet. He looks for that bite. And he looks for that bite, and when he finds that bite, he is the most dangerous angler on the water during that event. Right. I mean, it's when he finds it. And, and it, you know, he's won twice back-to-back. -back. When he mm -hmm. went to Florida, he won, and then he went straight to the California Delta and won right. two FLW events, a quarter million dollars in two weeks, and then... We just saw it a couple years back when he did it again. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it's just you see these anglers like Kevin Van Dam cranking. You know, you get on those deals that they know they're, they're going to find that bite. Right, right. Yeah. Even even if they can't catch as many fish as the other guy, but, you know, yeah. when they can get on that bite, they know they're the best in the world at it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's, you know, it's interesting. One of the things I did, and this is an interesting study uh, for any angler I think should do, um, is – you go back and look at your successful tournaments mm -hmm. or your successful days if you're not a tournament guy. A lot of guys watching aren't tournament guys. But you go back and look at your most success that you've had, and you look at those techniques that you're using to have your best success. Those are your strengths, guys. Those are your strengths. Write them down. You might not even know it, but when you look back, you say, hey, you know, every time I'm in the top five, I'm flipping. Right. And, and for me, it's, it's swim bait fishing and mm -hmm. frog fishing. And – the first three tournaments this year, I, I, I after the first three events, I was in 97th in the points. The next three events, I picked up a frog and a swim bait, <laughs> and that is it. And I have moved myself. As a matter of fact, Darnell, the first day, I was actually into the classic. Then I, I slipped because I had lost a couple of big ones. But 
um, I'm now within, you know, range of the classic. So we got three That's big awesome. events ahead, and, and I know that I need to go and fish my strengths. And your strengths might apply. And oh. I don't know, this isn't giving information, but right. the uh, everybody knows that Thousand Islands is up. The water level's up. Something might happen up there in the shallows. We don't know, and that's certainly your Let's strength. Say I finished 16th last time. Wait oh, you did? Yeah. Did you did you fish largemouth or smallmouth? I did. I fished both. A mixed you fish, bag. You fished so. the mixed bags. Well, uh, I, I am aware of 25-pound stringers of small or of largemouth yes. being caught on Thousand Islands. It's certainly capable of producing that. And uh, with that high water, it's going to be really interesting to see which direction guys go you know, to be able to be successful yeah. up there. And, and I mean, it, it, you're right. I mean, that, that place is such an incredible smallmouth fishery, and it really is an incredible largemouth fishery. So it's going to be fun to see what guys do to, you know, to win. I'm just going to go up there and keep doing what I've been doing to get me in this moving forward progress uh, of the season. So, so you know, there's no secret what I'll probably be throwing. <laughs> well, we, we've got some of them on the table here, yeah. and we're going to be talking about them in just a minute. You – I, I just wrote a note. You catch a lot of lunkers, all right? Lunkers are big fish in the derby, right? Whoever catches that, and, and you catch an unusually high amount of those. You know, it, it, I, I, it is weird. Like, if you took, you know, I fished four Bassmaster Classics. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't fish a lot of them because I usually, you know, you're try swing, to you're swing. swinging for the bleachers. I, yeah. But of the four Bassmaster Classics, I got two big fish of the entire events. I fished three majors when we had majors. And of those majors, I have two big fish. Yep. So you take the, the seven, you know, I have four big fish out of the seven biggest tournaments I ever fished. Wow. So, I, yeah, there's something they said, I guess. But well, a lot of it is, you know, picking up the bait that's going to get the big bite. And, and fishing for, do you think that's fishing for isolated fish? Or? Yeah, I, you know, I do think there's a lot to be said about that, too. And, and doing things a little bit differently, you know. Mm -hmm. um, those big fish get big for a reason, and I think, you know, you just have to do something a little different. And you you have to have a, a tremendous uh, patience, right, to be able to fish that way, to be able to endure those stretches. I, I can only imagine. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming uh, that you're having long stretches without the, bites. Uh, yeah, and it, 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 knowing in the back of your head you can pick up a spinning rod and right. finesse, you know, some fish. And, and not and, do that. I know, and, and that and, – and, I'm really trying to work with the spinning rod a lot more lately because, yeah. and I've won, you know, I won that big major drop shotting. Right. And, and so I've won, you know, finesse fishing, but I have so much fun throwing the big baits. Yeah. You know, and that, and that, it's just one of those deals, you know, I gotta, I gotta find that medium that works best for me and I'm still working on it, you know, 13 <laughs> years into my career, I'm still working on that to be a more, you know, consistent, consistent angler that's going to make more classics. But um, at the same time, you go into a tournament not thinking about the classic. You go in the tournament trying to win that tournament. So, right, and and, and you know, winning the classic obviously oh. is going to separate you. It separates anglers and and really makes your careers. But but I learned early in my career that the the to have a really successful career, you had to get in the winner's circle. Right, get being consistent, making checks, um, finishing a lot of high end of points. Uh, really didn't acquire sponsors. Didn't help you get sponsorships. No, you're absolutely right. The, the wins are what what mm -hmm. really have, you know, made my career. I right. Mean, if I if I didn't win and I say I made a bunch of classics and, you know, just even if I fared well at the classics, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be as significant as the the wins that I've had. So, it's you're hard to right. win. It, it, it's very hard to win. And, and guys that win a lot, like like I can you know, mm -hmm. and, and and Skeet and Van Dam, you know, it's just it's incredible to see, and it just shows that guys can be that good at the sport right and it, it's very very difficult to get it in that winter circle yeah. and and our sport is tough that way you know because even kevin yeah. who i think has 20 some odd wins it's a, it's still such a low percentage oh of it really is maybe 300 tournaments he's fished over the years of yeah. war you know and 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 he's the best that has ever done it so our, our sport is set up that way it's it's difficult to get in winter circle and you got to be able to you got to be able to live in that world but you you do yeah. it uh, an amazing way and, and stay persistent with these baits and big baits. But I am super excited about what you're showing us today because this is a slight departure from from that big bait strategy. And uh, t tell us about it. You got a well, brand new swim bait here. What do, what do we have here? Well, we do. We got this brand new. It's the Boom Boom. 
you guys see that on the let's see I can pull it uh, right about there look so at this that. is a four and a half inch version of the boom boom swim bait wow and right now it's a weedless version so you're going to want to put like a, a quarter ounce five aught um you know weedless hook on it a lot of times i'll fish it with like the owner flashy hook five aught that's perfect bait you know mm -hmm. rigging system hayabusa is a new sponsor of mine okay. hayabusa hooks has a new seven aught uh, with a quarter ounce weight and it runs perfect now their seven aught is actually a smaller size if you were to compare it to other companies seven aught so um with four and a half inch bait that seven aught is perfect and i've caught a lot of fish on that rig just like that and we're working on a line through of this exact same bait there's going to be an absolute smallmouth bass killer um and there's other ways to rig it too you, know, you yeah. can put it on a jig head you can you can do a lot of different things with it um without giving up too much before the end of the season but right, right. this is going to be something that's going to be tied on for the rest of the season for me and uh, we are releasing it here at iCast. Uh, it'll be available in stores in August. I know Tackle Warehouse will have them. Okay. Um, in August. And so it's called? It's called the Baby Boom. The you baby know, so we boom. got the Boom Boom, and now we got the Baby Boom. Okay. So this is it. And uh, we actually have this guy right here. This is a new color. This is the Pro Blue. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Put it down. Am I too high there? This is a Pro Blue. It's got a little, <laughs> little gold in it, a uh, little blue back. And uh, it's just a killer color. And uh, mm -hmm. we really designed this one thinking about smallmouth bass. That, well, I, I tell you, you know, it's, uh, the, the the original bait, right, is what's that, a six-inch version? Right, six-inch. Okay, and this is a four-and-a-half? It's a four-and-a-half, it, four and, and we're not going to do the rig like we did with the six-inch. Okay. I, I, you know, we tried it. It just doesn't seem to be as effective as just rigging it weedless. I mean, with a bait that's this small, fish just have no problem inhaling it. Um, your hookup ratio is incredible with a weedless hook. And... Uh, you know, we are going to mess with, uh, it's almost ready, but we're doing a, um, a line through where it'll actually, like, you put a little treble hook on the belly and it'll slide yeah. up the line. Uh, and, 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 and that's, hold up a little better. and, and the, that rigging system to me is the highest strike to catch system right. when, when you do the line through. Yeah, when you hook a fish, I mean, that baits out of the way. Right. It uh, slides up the line. It slides up the, up the line. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I've found. I'm, I'm really excited about yeah. that, and, and and I'm looking forward to throwing these, these baits. The six-inch uh, variety is, is a big bait, but a lot of times I want a smaller one because a lot of the bodies of water that we fish have smaller forwards different times a year, and to be able to have a, a smaller bait, and it's look it looks so awesome. Now, let, let's, let's, give, uh, let's give the folks at home a little uh, tutorial on uh, – on where and how are they going to be fishing these baits? Okay, so really a swim bait like this, you could fish it if you got boat docks. Any kind of structure, any visual structure. Does it skip? It skips. We made this bait. If you notice, it's actually really flat. I mean, it's a flatter mm -hmm. swim bait. Yep. And, and we did this with the 6-inch, and it worked out so well that we went ahead and continued it on the smaller size. Okay. And, you know, I'm left-handed, but when I skip a bait, I just like to get it to really skip low profile get it's far back underneath the docks and swim baits is something that most people don't consider a skipping bait because they're a lot rounder bodied and uh, having this flat body it allows you to skip it way back under cover mm -hmm. um, undercut banks you know stuff like that the other thing is grass shallow grass um, you know weedless bait like this you can roll it right through pad stems lily pads that are blooming um, yeah, I mean, there's so many different varieties of ways to fish this. Right. It's pretty much endless. I mean, it's a bait that you want to have tied on all the time, whenever there's bait present. Um, Which is always. Always. You know, uh, Kentucky Lake, for instance, mm -hmm. um, without giving any too many of my steers for next year, but you put this on a big jig head and get it down deep, you're going to catch a lot of big fish that way, too. So, right. um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, you can fish it in all different depths and, uh, you know, if I was to say, hey, you're going to buy a pack of these or, you know, fish it for the first time, I would say, get, you know, get you either, uh, you know, the Hayabusa hook. If, I, I don't know if they're available yet. So right now get the owner uh, flashy. Um, it's it's basically a quarter ounce, five-aught hook, and it's got a spinnerbait blade on the bottom. Rig it up, completely expose, put the hook through, and then just bury the tip back in, the weighted belly, cast it out on 15-pound fluorocarbon, let it sink for a little bit and just start reeling it slow. You don't have to do anything. Every now and then you want to give it a little quicker turn, something like that, if you want to, you know, give it a little more panic action. But it, it's got a built-in panic action. We we actually describe that in the packaging. But you'll see the head shake, the body will wobble, and the tail thump. And uh, I really think when you're fishing a swim bait, as long as the swim bait is doing all three of those things, 
you don't really need to beat it off cover. It's It's got the action built into the bait. Awesome. Well, what is your take on conditions? Like, I, we've, we've, we've wrestled with this uh, on, on Bash U from time to time. Yeah. There's some differing opinions. Is, uh, it, is so, swim baiting a cloudy thing? Is it a sunny thing? You know, it's funny because I think different parts of the country, different scenarios. I mm-hmm. think grass, you know, with clouds, I think they kind of get up and they roam a little bit more out of the grass. But I think for, for the majority, I have my best swim bait days with a little bit of a breeze to slick, calm, sunny days. Gotcha. And I think a lot of it is if you if you play baseball mm-hmm. and you say you're, you're playing and, and it's cloudy and you get a pop fly, you're going to see that ball. You're going to catch it. You're not going to be blinded by the sun. Now, if it's sunny, you look up, it's going to be blinding. To that fish, it's still blinding. But what that does during a sunny day, and this is why it's better, they don't get a very good look at the bait. They gotcha. know something is moving above them. They know to go for it, grab it, and get back down. That's interesting. So yeah, I've never that's, heard that's it described the way I look like at that. It. I would think, on, you know, everybody I think would assume on a sunny day the fish would get a better look at it. But but you're, the way that you fish a swim bait, which is above. That's right. This is above the, the fish right. most of the time. He's actually getting lost in the sun, and, and that causes a reaction. Right. And I think they just they, they hit it harder. I've noticed my bites are more violent during no those kidding. sunny conditions. Right, right. I think a lot of times the cloud cover, I, I see them chase it a lot more. And then and they'll hit it right at the boat sometimes, you know. But mm-hmm. I think they're, they're just more willing to roam around a little bit. Get, you know, mm-hmm. they don't, they're not blinded by the sun. So right. I think there's something to do with that. And, that, and that's, you know, that's just the way I think about it. Well, you talked about, about, a bit about the hooks. Uh, conditions and stuff like that. Uh, what, what do you throw? Is this 20-pound fluoro? Is this braid? How, how you know, you it rate? depends on where you're at. If you're down in Texas and you want to throw this, I'd, I'd say go throw it on 20-pound fluoro. Absolutely. Um, I, I would fish it on braided line in, like, shallow grass, like in Florida and stuff like that. Um, as a matter of fact, Okeechobee this year, I caught a 10- to 12-pounder on the 6-inch version, um, and I was throwing on an 8 ot owner beast hook, uh, weighted, uh, it's a 3-8-ounce weighted hook. So make sure if you're fishing the 6-inch uh, weedless boom boom, that is the hook. We literally designed If you look at the nose, it goes around that screw lock and completely protects it so only your knot is showing. Um, and it helps you cut right through all that grass. So I'll put that on 50-pound braid. Um, I'm using it on my crank launch eye rod, which is a 7-11 okay. rod. And uh, I'm actually using a, a larger ardent reel, one of the big ones. You know, it's a magnum, and it has a, a larger spool capacity and braid. So I can just bomb this thing as far as, you know, you get in that hardy pond area um, and just start winding that sucker and uh, cut right through that grass. When they hit it, you just rip them right through that grass. That's why I caught. Actually, to this day, it may be my biggest swim bait fish I'd ever caught. I didn't weigh the fish, but it was between 20, 10 and 12 pounds during the official practice. Wow. So awesome. it's pretty cool. I got some really good photos of it and everything else and nice. choked it. And uh, Yeah, it's just it's a neat way to fish it. But I caught – it's funny because I had my, my video camera going. I had my Garmin Verb, and I, I got videos of me catching, like, undersized bass on the six inch version <laughs> it's crazy how you still hook them even with that big hook yeah. well you know and that's a, that's a misconception a lot of people have is uh the big swim baits a lot of times catch little fish yeah it just depends on the forage base that's right, right. that's right and you know down there is predominantly golden shiners and mm-hmm. you know you get around those bigger ones and that's where the bigger fish are going to be and I, I really think those fish in those big grassy areas i think they move around in wolf packs yeah because it seems like when i start getting bit it's this one area just over and over and over again and you just got to keep them lit up and you catch them while you can and then you go hours without a bite and i just think maybe they're moving around in wolf packs or the bait flies in their area and you just happen to be throwing at the same time gotcha now this is a point of interest to me because there's some differing opinions on how and when to set the hook when you get a strike on a bait like this, whether it's uh, whether it's exposed hooks or whether it's weedless, uh, what's, what's your take on this situation? Well, so, you know, if I'm not just bombing it out in the middle of the grass, I'll actually take it and put it on my frog rod. Okay. Cut my braid, put it on my frog rod. Braid. And, and, and when you have that weedless hook, you get bite like a frog, set the hook like it's a frog bite. Because um, you're going to be penetrating through a little bit of plastic. And the hook so up you set, you set right away. Um, you know, you, the first tap's like usually a bump, and then that second bump. So okay. really, that's when you want to set the hook. So don't use, even frogging, like, I don't like too stiff of a rod. I know a lot of guys are using a lot heavier action than I would ever use frog fishing. Right. A lot of it is because 
if you see that blow up, or even with these swim baits, you'll see them roll on it and stuff like that. Your instant reaction is to set the hook. If you have too sad for rod, you pull it out of their face, whether it's a frog or a swim bait. All right. Um, so I still watch everything. I think just time on the water and doing it really gets me down. But I like the, what I call the load rate. I like the rod to be soft enough to where when I do see that explosion, I set the hook. The rods kind of have just enough give where it doesn't just yank the bait out of their face. Right. But once they, you know, got it, and when you set that hook, when it does catch up to that load rate, it's pure backbone. And you're hooking that fish and you're horsing them in. Yeah. Um, now, if you're fishing it on the uh, treble hook version or the line through version we got, um, there's more of a, you know, a lighter action rod using a, you know, a medium heavy, something mm-hmm. like that. And, and I'll even fish it down. Um, I, I won a, a boat in a Bassmaster event at Lake uh, Shasta years ago throwing a swim bait on 10-pound line. No kidding. So, you know, that's the other thing. Lighten up your line if you're fishing open water, you're fishing spotted bass, fishing stuff like that. Because using a treble hook, mm-hmm. you're really not going to lose those fish. That, when they got that big plastic, they don't fight as hard as they would if they're, you know, on a, a, a shaky head or a drop shot. You know, it's, it's things like that. You know, they just, yeah. they're kind of like more concerned about what the heck is in their mouth that's they can't swallow anymore you know and it's <laughs> pulling them in so that's uh, fascinating. so yeah i never thought about it like that so I, I i actually try to get away with the lightest line i possibly can well it and keeps course, me competitive that way and that's going to give you uh i guess more action of the bait right? oh, yeah oh yeah absolutely more action yeah. of the bait allow um, it to run deeper at a slower retreat absolutely you know because it cuts through that water a little bit better right you know fluorocarbon it, it, and, and i usually use fluorocarbon um but it, it sinks and you think, oh well, the thick, you know, the heavier line, the better it'll sink the bait. No, not, not when you're trying to reel it, retrieve or something, right? Because you're actually uh, um, not cutting through the water as easy. So the lighter the line, and even in fluorocarbon, you're gonna actually cut down through that water and get it down deeper. Right, right. So this so, looks like to be a big factor. I mean, it, what, what do we, what do we got here? This is the baby boom. Yeah. Uh, Optima boom. baits. Um, you guys are here at the show. Is this entered into the uh, contest? Uh, you mean the best in show? No, because it's a new size of the bait. It has to actually oh. be an all new okay. bait. Um, Rules. But Optimum Baits does have a new Bill Owen swim bait, okay. and it comes with a uh, like a screw lock head. Okay. On the swim bait, and you're actually feeding the line through the head itself, through the lead head, and it goes up. And then the, now you're putting a treble hook on the back of the bait. Right. And it, it's a really unique thing. I can't wait to try it. Um, it looks like something would be great for dragging on the bottom. Uh-huh. You know, maybe even like in the goby situation where you want to drag like something on the bottom tube yeah. and you know something like that with a swim bait. Yep, that's neat. Well, so. Bill is uh, you and Bill are both instructors uh, at Bash Bash University. I appreciate uh, all the seminars that you've given to us over the years. All the little tidbits. Oh man, it's fun. You know, it's it, it it's sometimes it's hard to stay on track when you're you know you're discussing <laughs> something because you just you start thinking about those moments, those exciting moments yeah. in, 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 when you fished and. Um, they kind of overwhelm whatever you're trying to tell, you know, the story. But uh, at the same time, you know, any little bit of information that any of these pros give you guys, um, it's from experience. It's that's that's what you're learning. You're learning what we have experienced, and we're we're able to share it. And that's what's so cool about Bass University. Well, I, so. I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you being part of the program. And I want to invite everybody uh, who has never checked out Bass University. Uh, we have a great discount promo going on right now. It's BUTV30. Uh, try it for 30 days no, for free on us. Come check it out. You can watch Freddie's seminars and Bill Lowen's and, and all the rest. We have almost 300 instructional courses on Bash University TV, and we launch two new uh, seminars every single week at Bash University TV. So I want to invite you guys to go check that stuff out. And we'll look forward to talking to you about working with us next year. We're going to be back in Tulsa on January 28th and 29th i believe those are the dates we're going to be uh check that out at the bash university.com uh we'll be releasing the rest of our live bash university schedule uh where you'll be able to actually come uh to the events and look in for any tackle box and ask them questions one-on-one uh that schedule will be released very very soon so look for that at the bash university.com so you got yourself Back in classic contention after a troubling start. Right, yeah. And we're coming up on a northern swing. Yes. How, how you feeling? Man, you know, it, it's – I feel good. You know, I've, I've, I've done really well at Champlain. Mm-hmm. I've uh, top 12 there a couple of times. Um, dang near one in FLW. I had a four-and-a-half pounder jump out of my live well, actually, which what? is the craziest. That, yeah, back in 2005, uh, throwing a frog. And uh, it was like, it's fishing, never seen it before. And um, I had, 
a uh, four and a half pounder jump out of my live well with minutes left uh, in the day, and I had a you know pretty decent run back. So I, I literally threw out, caught a pound and a half, and I still had eighteen something. Good. Night. So I came in and I ended up twelfth. And back then it was like a two hundred thousand dollar FLW event, um, and they started oh. the weights over. Right. Yeah. So like if you made the top. The top ten, they started the weights over and did it again. Remember, it was like yeah. a the open they would call it, and uh, I think Aaron yeah, Martin. That's right. and, yep. Aaron Martin took second, and uh, uh, who won that one? I can't recall. W I w think Scott Martin won that one actually. Yeah. Would you have won it? I, I feel like I would have because those guys were bed fishing smallmouth, and I was largemouth fishing. Okay. Um, and my fish were just getting better and better as the, the weather started warming up a little bit better. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I was I was on the right deal to win. Like I said, I could I felt like I was on 20 pounds a day doing what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, it just turned out a fish jumped out of my live well. And the crazy thing is, so I finished 101 in the points that year. So I only had a couple really decent events. It was my first year on FLW tour. Right. And back then, you know, there were 200 boats and the top 100 requalified. Wow. Uh, okay. So I didn't get the invite back. That's oh, wow. when I went and fished the Opens out west and qualified to the Bassmaster Tour the following year. So okay. I fished the tour. Okay. Yeah. That's how it all happened. It's all happened. And then that tour year was a, was a rough year. I didn't do very good. And that's when I went and fished and stayed with you. Right. And uh, we actually roomed a little bit during those seasons with the Bassmaster Tour. Right. Um, I think one of the tournaments I remember the most was Norman, the freezing cold, oh, frigid. Yeah. yeah. And you told me you better go to you better go to Walmart and get you a helmet. <laughs> and I remember wearing a helmet, never took it off all day long, <laughs> like fished with it on. That was how bad and cold that's it was. Funny. That's crazy. <laughs> to that's, this day, that was the coldest event I've ever fished. I, and those crazy fish on Lake Norman don't care. They're still biting the cold. They're hitting top water. That's insane. I don't get it. They, that lake is like that. It's just. Yeah. Some lakes are out there. The cold weather can shut them down. Lake Norman's not one, man. They'll bite right yeah. through those cold seasons. That but that weird. was – I always but, appreciated yeah. staying with you. It was a lot of man, fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how – you know, for me, uh, tournament fishing, uh, I, one of the best parts is who you're, who you're rooming with. You well, know? you know, it's funny because I think that event is when you taught me about the shaky head. Is that right? I don't think I'd ever thrown a shaky head no before. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. So, honestly, yeah. See, see yeah, that? And I've had some good success with it. There so, you go. Thank well, you. I'm, I'm happy to help. That's what we that's, do here at Fast U. That's right. Well, what did you learn about fish jumping out of the live well, man? Man, uh, so check this out. Fast I, forward to last year at Lido Bend. Oh, last, no. I roll up at the end of the day, and I catch a six-pounder real close to the takeoff. And I went to put it in my live well. When I put it in, a three-and-a-half jumped out. So <laughs> I put it in live well, close it. John Murray was around me at the Champlain event. When this all went down, and he's like, what, 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 what's going on? And then he asks me at the way, and he's like, dude, did you not have a limit at Toledo Bend? And I said, no, I had a limit. They called themselves. Oh. And here's the worst part about that. I finished 13th. Oh. Ounces from the top 12 cut. Oh, my goodness. So I, it's happened to me twice, I, and it's cost me the final day cuts. Well, honestly, I, I watch guys, and this is, this is a pet peeve of mine. I watch guys oh. on TV. All the time. Leave their live well little. Leave their live well. They're culling. And I don't do not that. Not care in the world. I don't do that. But what, what I do do is when it's windy and rough, it's I like to put the plug. There's an extra plug that yeah. you can put in the boat and keeps the water level really high in there. So when you're running, you don't lose a bunch of water. Right. And I left it in there. And, of course, when I get to start fishing, I always hit the fill button. So I catch the fish. My water is all the way to the top. And I open it like this. And this sucker just. I mean, it was unbelievable. But I. I put the other fish in, and you know I came out to shy, but yeah. it's just uh, well, you got to. And I and I, and I mean, it's not like I open the live well all the way up. Either. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll just go, hey, let me just put yep. the fish in there. I just and that sucker saw daylight and, whoo, and just goes went for it. Oh man, you got to watch that guy. Blinded by the sun. Yeah, pay attention. I mean, uh, I I I take special care. I open slow. I have my partners. Or I'll put like if I got a call, I'll put a big tackle bag on one side, yeah. and so I'm. So if they try, you know, we got at least some help. Try to keep those fish in the boat. It's have you ever had this crazy. happen where you're, you're fishing, and you you kind of like you hear some rustling back there, and you look over, and your guys looking at your fish in the live well. Yes, They're, I was like, what? Don't do that, and you don't want to be like yeah. mean or rude because they don't know. They're just like, oh, you know, excited here, to see the fish. Here, here's just a little etiquette, and. Uh, and I'm just going to, for all you co-anglers and for marshals or whatever it may be, um, the one thing you don't want to do is investigate your partner's live well. Don't because do it. 
the last thing you want to do is open up your partner's lid and have one of them fish scoot, man. You don't want that on your head. I don't want that on your head. Uh, so you take care of your fish. Let your pro take care of his. <laughs> and That's it's, right. It's crazy. I, I know Mark Davis at, at one of the bass shoes was telling a story that was one of the monumental times in his career. And it was nothing like that, but it was about lost fish. He was coming to Okeechobee, running up from the southern end, and it was kind of rough. And he's bouncing, pounding through the waves, pounding through the waves. And then he feels something hit him in the arm. And he looks back, and all his fish are flopping around his back deck. This live well lid had popped open, and the wave action, uh, and they oh all got gosh. out. He was able to, like, capture two of them. And the rest of the fish went back into the drink. Oh. And he was, it was a, ch a check. It was a strong finish for him. And obviously coming in with just a few fish, uh, that didn't happen. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. That just makes me sick thinking about it. <laughs> I've watched I've watched a good friend. of Remember Zach Thompson? Yeah. Yeah, he came out on tour with yeah. me for sure. I, he, you know, he does really good at Lake Shasta, and he's won there. And he came in, and he had a bag full of spotted bass, and he got off the boat. And one of the spotted bass jumped out of the bag and into the water. And now Zach had just quit smoking. And uh, <laughs> I watched, I mean, I, you know, you just, it's almost comical, but you don't want to laugh. You know what right. I mean? Like, it's like, because it's, it's, you know how terrible the thing it is. Yeah. And he just sat there smoking a cigarette. Just, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> man, that's not a good way to quit no, smoking. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's But yeah, terrible. I felt I bad. It cost anybody. him, it cost him big I've time. I've seen it happen there. a lot. I've seen guys' bags rip open at the oh. thing. I've seen them fall and the fish spill out uh seeing seen a lot of that kind of stuff i love the new bags oh the zippers the, and the, the zipper yeah. containerized bag systems that they have out there now that's those are amazing systems they really that, uh, really take that that pressure off you from losing fish but uh so so you don't are you going to do anything differently now in your livels are you going to stop filling them to the top i mean you gotta stop this i know Fred, it's costing you money man i know i know i just fish care is such a big deal to me so so you want to you want to get that fresh water? That's that's the yeah. that's why you're doing it, keeping that oxygen level in there. A lot of water in the live wells, and just occasionally one jumps out. That's it. I mean, it's not <laughs> like it happens all the time. It's just yeah. happened twice in very yeah. critical moments in my career. Uh, yeah. I I can appreciate it, but uh, hey, you how's the new house going out over there in Oklahoma? Oh, dude, it's awesome. You know, yeah. we we did something different. We went and built uh, uh, a 60 by 80 metal building. Yeah. It's got uh, four giant garage door 16 foot drive boat truck right through right through you know two full rigs or you nice. can put four boats in there several <laughs> cars whatever you want to do but then you open that door and you're into another metal building that we pushed against it and built the house in the metal building oh. and you walk it, it, it's so unbelievable because people come over where's your house and you're like just go in that door and they're blown away because my wife actually designed it and uh that's I, highly it's super unusual. i've never super heard of anything nice like layout and i mean it's beautiful it really is and we're in the middle of 40 acres and kids can go out and ride nice. their bikes you know we we got a shooting range right in front of our yard you know right in front of the house and um, we got a pond right there the kids can fish and yeah. it's just neat and then you know i'm only five minutes to one of the nicest launch ramps at darnell nice so i can literally pull my boat out of the water drive home without really ever hooking it up uh, excellent yeah well i gotta see some so. pictures of the man cave yeah it's that's basically what it is it, it the fact that Julie, thank you so much, not only designed it, but approved this idea, and, and we made it happen. Now, we're going to build a house eventually. This is going to be a guest house because um, it's only a two-bedroom right, right. place right now, and we got two kids, so they're sharing a room at the moment. But we are going to build a house. This will be the guest house. So when we have events or we want to do a media thing mm -hmm. or if Bass University wants to come out, you got a place to stay. Outstanding. Yeah. I, I look forward to coming out there someday. Cool. Hey, did you happen to drive down here? No, fly. I flew. As a matter of fact, that was a nightmare. I was, I was we, supposed to go to Houston. They moved me to Chicago. I got in uh, one. Uh, I was like, well, we got we got some Bass University gear. We were hoping to get you to haul back to Oklahoma. Oh first. man, I love but, that. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. but we'll we'll send it on the plane with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, but uh, congratulations on the baby boom. Thank you. Uh, great little awesome swim bait, and wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. You know, get it back into that classic number five. I appreciate it. Catch another lunker for us, and uh, we'll be pulling for you. And uh, and I want to uh, thank you again for being here with us, being a Bass U speaker. Mm -hmm. And um, and I guess we'll see you out on the Elite Trail this year. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate Best it. Best of luck, Thanks, buddy. buddy. We're, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, 
The carpenter's going to tell us what we're doing. I think we're taking a break. What are we doing? We're going to take a short break. Okay. And as soon as he gets out of his uh, business meetings trying to rule the world, Boyd Duckett will be here. And right after Boyd Duckett will be Bradley Dorch. Outstanding. Pete. Rookie of the year, FLW. And Bradley I'll, coming up. That's right. And I'll get you a five-hour energy. You're going to need a bro. Yeah. Five-hour <laughs> energy. Come on, Boyd. This is, this is priority number one. Bash University Live. Uh, look forward to talking to you, buddy. Uh, we'll be seeing him real soon. And check back with us. Uh, maybe 10, 15-minute break. Bash University Live. Thanks, Fred. Thank you.